from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. For everyone out there that disagrees, change the channel. You're not worth it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's one 800 800 one 800 5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I love this opinion piece from the Contra Costa Times in Contra Costa, California. First of all, I love the alliteration of Contra Costa, California. Secondly, I love the fact that we... We butcher Spanish in California, but we butcher it in different ways depending on what part of the state you live in. In Orange County, we have a place called Costa Mesa. In Northern California, you have Contra Costa, California. And the word C-O-S-T-A means coast. It's the same word, but it's butchered uh, differently in Northern California than it is in Southern California. It's very strange. So this is from the Contra Costa Times. In Katherine Heigl's new film, Knocked Up, the Grey's Anatomy star and Botticelli Beauty plays a successful career girl who has a one-night stand with an unemployed slobbish slacker. When she becomes pregnant, the two reunite and eventually fall in love. In pop culture, this isn't the first time the loser gets the girl. Think of John Cusack in Say Anything. Jason Schwartzman in Shop Girl. That was the Steve Martin movie. And almost every Adam Sandler comedy. For type A women at the top of their game, what's the allure? They're safe and fun, says Dana Ovadia of Walnut Creek, California. You feel like you're still living in your youth. Ovadia, who heads to nursing school in the fall, says she has friends who justify dating losers, even if they're, quote, terrible boyfriends. I have friends who say, I'm not going to marry him or anything. I'm just having fun, she says. In Knocked Up, the character, Allison Scott, played by Heigl, is a newly promoted on-air correspondent for E! Entertainment Television and a fox. Does anyone say that anymore? She's such a fox. Very 80s. Ben Stone, played by Seth Rogen, is a slovenly pothead who stays home watching movies with his fellow slacker roommates. Their goal in life is to launch a website listing when and where actresses appear nude in movies. Ben is the first to admit that Allison is too good for him. He says, you're prettier than I am. But he's also sweet, funny, and honest. While their yin and yang makes for great comedic entertainment, experts say there is something to the pairing of underachieving men and overachieving women. Part of it, says Linda Phelps, a college and career advisor, stems from the fact that women are more successful than ever. Things have changed a lot, says Phelps. Women have become extreme overachievers, and with that stress and pressure comes the need to relax. It can be totally relaxing to be with someone who is carefree, adventurous, and doesn't take themselves that seriously. In some cases, Phelps says, that side of them has never been touched, and these men help them tap into that. 
Sometimes we're so programmed that we forget to have any fun, she says. It makes me so sad for women today. Lafayette, California psychologist Suzanne Dudek says there are endless reasons why high-achieving women choose laid-back men. She says these loser types make wonderful dates. They are charming. They will call. They'll say, I felt something. They send the flowers. They ask your opinion. And the women love it. Ditto from the guy's perspective. Successful women are sexy, says college student Reed Sutter of Pleasant Hill, California. They're in control and know what they want. You know, most guys don't feel that way, right? <laughs> they managed to find one loser who made the comment, but come on. we get to that in a second. Women like it too, says Dudek, but it's a fairly new phenomenon. She says, we girls of the 1960s didn't have strong role models, so we needed to prove that we could do it all. Go to college, become something like boys, be it lawyers or doctors, and cook and sew and garden and entertain and still be caretakers. In proving that they could do a million tasks at once, Dudek says, women get approval. She calls this a sociological and cultural shift and a role reversal between men and women. We need what the men needed back then, she says, approval and recognition. Instead of bragging about what their husbands do, which women still do, now they brag about us. They're impressed to be with us. The more there's acceptance for women in high-powered jobs, the more the men like to snag one of us. <laughs> Come on. Come on. High-powered females make for a great booty call, a great one-night stand, and the reason is because they've got no time for you. It's not that I would never have sex with a woman like that. I have dated more than one high-powered female executive. I have dated television producers. I have dated attorneys. I have dated a psychologist. I dated a stockbroker who gave me one of the best stock tips I ever got, and I made almost three quarters of a million dollars on this one stock tip. I've got no problem dating women like that. The thing is, I don't want to be involved with them because they've got no time for me. And if you've got no time for me, what do I need a relationship with you for? Just give me what you can give me. Give me a little booty call and then get the hell out of my life. Right? I come home at night about 8.30. I work late. I come home about 8.30 most nights, sometimes 9, 9.30. If I'm going to be in a relationship, when I get home, I want the lights on. I want dinner, cooking. Maybe I want my fireplace lit. As it is... As an unmarried individual, I come home to a dark house. And by the way, I like living alone. I'm not lonely. I'm not complaining about that. But the only reason to be in a relationship, the uh, only significant reason, is if you want to be with somebody all the time. What is the point of having a relationship with somebody who doesn't get home until after you do? Or they leave town all the time. They're never around. You know, as a man, if I've been in a relationship, it's because I want to come home and have somebody be there when I get there. Somebody to ask me how my day was, and then somebody who will listen to my response. Somebody who will understand what I'm talking about. And if they don't, they'll ask questions because they want to understand what I'm talking about. You know, there's nothing wrong with having sex with uh, high-powered uh, females. I think it's fantastic. I used to know a woman in the television business who would call me at 11, 11.30 at night. She'd call me up. She'd say, what are you doing? And if I was doing nothing, and what was I doing? I was smoking weed. I was, uh, one time he used to have that bottle of Stoli in the freezer. I'd just be doing some shots or something. I'd be hanging out. What are you doing? Nothing. Why don't you come on over? I come on over, and within 10 minutes, I've got this one bent over her sofa. She didn't have any time for chit-chat. And at work, she was a bitch. She was bossing people around all the time and cracking the whip. 
when I came over there, she wanted her ass to be cracked. That's what she wanted cracked. She wanted someone to tell her what to do. But do I really want to marry a woman like that or have an involvement with her? Absolutely not. Are you kidding me? I have to come home and I don't see you until 11 at night? Are you kidding? Who needs that? Just give me the stuff you can give me. Sex. A little vulgar companionship and then let me out of there. <laughs> don't be trying to get commitments from me beyond that because you're not capable of any more than that yourself. I'm amazed. I think some of these women are delusional thinking that... Uh, that guys want to be with chicks who are never around. They're always working, always busy. They're always at a project. They're always at a meeting. They're always at a lunch. They're always at a dinner. Don't mistake the fact that a loser can come over and visit you and service you anytime as the idea that he might want to marry you or have a serious relationship with you. I just don't think so. But more about that coming up. This is that woman who we were talking about earlier. Her name was uh, Dudek. She said, we need what the men needed back then, approval and recognition. Instead of bragging about what their husbands do, which women still do, now they brag about us. They're impressed to be with us. The more there's acceptance for women in high-powered jobs, the more the men like to snag one of us. Shannon Walpole, the story goes on to say, doesn't feel right passing judgment on less than professional guys. After all, she says, you can't help who you fall in love with. By the way, yes, you can. Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. What an excuse. Another excuse for the waves to wash over you in life. You can't, <laughs> you can't help who you fall in love with. Are you kidding me? You know, if you're 60... If you're humongous, if I need to put a bag over your head, I don't care if you're the nicest person in the world. I will never fall in love with you. I can tell you that right now. If you stick a needle in your arm, if you drink two bottles of vodka a day and you hide the bottles in, under the laundry basket, if your family is constantly calling up and making demands on you or then me, people want to borrow money or people want to stay at our house all the time, or if you get a bunch of cackling hens as friends, guess what? I don't care what positive attributes you have. I won't fall in love with you, okay? I can help who I fall in love with. That is a whole separate topic, and that's one I want to talk about on its own. I just can't believe that line is in this story. Says here, still the Walnut Creek, California lawyer does believe their unions with overachieving women are challenging. She says, it's rare for those relationships to be successful because your core values have to be the same. That was Leah Reeves' experience. Reeves, who was from Portland and works in medical sales for five years, dated a guy whom she defines as a loser. She said, he was a bad boy and all the girls wanted to date him. My family tried to be supportive, but they knew he was a loser. Said bad boy dropped out of college and after a stint in the army settled into a graveyard shift job at an adult video store. It finally hit me then, Reeves says. It wasn't going to work out for us. <laughs> now, let me go back to uh, uh, the early part of this story. All of this stuff about... Um, how loser boyfriends are safe and fun for powerful women, you know, women with successful jobs, careers, what have you. Oh, yeah, I love being with these empty-headed losers. They're safe and fun. You know, when men like myself say, I don't want to be with someone with a high IQ who's going to challenge me and argue about politics with me all the time. I just want to be with somebody who wants to just hang out, be dopey, doesn't have much to say. When I come home from work, I want to relax. I want to relax. I've already done that. You know, the Catherine Hepburn, Spencer Tracy marriage where you come home and the other person just crackles with wit and sarcasm and they're just dripping with, you know, nastiness, talking about other people and lording their intelligence over others and what I've done that already. The witty repartee, you come home and then you have to be on your toes because the other person's going to constantly challenge you mentally. I did that. You know, my job is challenging mentally. 
I don't need to come home and be challenged mentally when I get home. I want to relax. It's one of the reasons I've enjoyed living alone so much, because when I get home, the witty repartee is over. I come home, I put my feet up, I turn on uh, the Dodgers, or the Lakers, or the Kings, or whatever season it is, and I just veg, and I love it. I don't need to come home to, uh, you know, political commentary, or uh, commentary about uh, movies and books and uh, other challenging things. I'm, uh, do I love to read and watch movies? Yes, I do. But if a man says he'd like to be with an underachieving woman who's just fun to hang out with or fun to be with, or just somebody who's fun, oh, my God, you're a misogynist, you hate women, you're intimidated by women. How about that one? You're intimidated by women. You know, you notice nobody in this story says the overachieving women who date losers are intimidated by men. But if a man says, I don't want to come home to a challenge every night. I just want to have fun. I just want to hang out with somebody dopey. If a man said, let's change the gender in this exact quote in the story. If a man said, I have friends who say, I'm not going to marry her or anything. I'm just having fun. <laughs> People would say, you're a woman hater. What do you mean? You're not serious. What are your intentions? What do you mean you're not going to marry her or anything? But the woman in the story says, I'm not going to marry him or anything. I'm just having fun. And that's perfectly okay because women are large and in charge. And, you know, you go, girl. Yeah, it's perfectly okay for women to do all the things that men get criticized for. It's pretty outrageous. I wonder if we have these overachieving women out there who date losers I wonder if you're one of the losers who's, uh, you know, you're working at the adult video store and your girlfriend or your wife is the, you know, the high-powered attorney, the partner in a law firm, the CEO of a company somewhere. <laughs> What's that like? And uh, don't you find it hypocritical that uh, the story here seems to say it's perfectly okay for women in high-powered careers to have loser boyfriends because they're safe and fun and, and, when, and they're sweet but that a man saying, you know, I just like to be with a bimbo. I just like coming home, you know, having sex, and she watches the game with me, and uh, she gets me food, and it's just fun. When I come home, it's just fun. I don't have to think. You know, there's something wrong with a man who believes that. Can, can you explain this to me, please? 1-800-5800-TOM. Like this. Like this. 1 800 I think you're the best debater I've ever, ever heard of. I'm a master debater. Yes, sir. And a cunning linguist. <laughs> and I'm an amateur gynecologist. This is the Tom Likey Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Successful women, loser guys. Kimberly on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. I uh, was one of those women. <laughs> I learned my lesson. It took me almost till I was about 35 to figure it out, but I finally did. So uh, tell us what that was like. It sucked. <laughs> well, you know, I really think the whole it, they're fun, they're harmless thing that you hear is is really not true. They're not fun. They're not harmless. That's for dang, that's for sure. It's it's. I think what it is is it's you know a bunch of little girls that um, haven't dealt with their issues with their fathers and their dominating fathers. Quite that was my issue. And um, you just they need to go out and not be dominated. They, and the your your statement about you know women being intimidated, I think that that's the underlying thing. Is I really do think that those women are intimidated, and part of the the uh, over ambitious nature is, is from needing to prove that they can be in control. That certainly was my deal. Is I needed to be as successful or even more uh, than my own father. And once I figured that out, and once I accomplished it, it wasn't, uh, they weren't so interesting anymore, <laughs> those guys. And it became kind of, it just was kind of ridiculous. And I, I just realized this is, this is, this is my issue. And these guys are not fun and they are not harmless. They're yeah. just, uh, 
you. But do you have a hard time meeting men who are as successful as you are? No, no. I mean, I'm, I've remarried, and um, and I'm with a very successful man who I totally respect and totally admire, and um, and we have a, a very, very good relationship, and it's based on that. I respect him and admired him before I even married him, and um, and he's more successful than me. And but you know, we're not you know obnoxiously successful, but <laughs> I'm not you know we're not that that kind of a L.A. scene, but definitely. Um, real comfortable and uh and it, it feels good to be with somebody like that and i i just uh, i just it's pathetic i see it all the time i see girls with these guys all the time yeah. and everywhere in la and but i as a successful male i know how they feel um i'm not afraid of women who make money um if there was a trust fund baby out there who would like to date me i'd be more than happy to um but the problem for me is not women with money or even women who are successful. If I'm in a relationship, I want a woman who gets home the time I do or before. I'm the same way. And you know what? When, and the thing with women that are going out with those guys, rarely are they there when you get home, which is kind of funny. You, 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 it's not as you know wonderful as, as those women are trying to make it out to be, saying that, oh, yeah, that they're fun and they're easy and they're harmless. It's not. It's it's depressing. They aren't there, and when and when they are, granted, I've been with one that was. And then it's like having a kid, and then you just wish they weren't there because they're trying to justify being, you know, you being their caretaker, and then it becomes really kind of embarrassing. There's really nothing redeeming in a relationship, in my opinion, if it's not a sort of a mutual ground where you're both contributing and you both feel good about yourself. <laughs> really. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't find it. Uh, I mean, guys that look for girls to take care of them, and girls that look for guys to take care of them are, are treading on real thin ice. Well, I mean, my whole thing is, I just don't want to support other people. So oh, I, yeah. I will. But I, I will generally date women who are less successful than I am, and uh, are not under the same uh, time constraints I am. Somebody who's around when I need them. I like that too. I mean, I think that's kind of a. I think that's 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 normal to want that to want somebody there when you get home and to want to have that companionship and to have that, you know, not always be having, chasing somebody and working around their schedule. Especially somebody who's busy and successful, you do. You want that. You want those conveniences. And even with your relationship, even though it's a human being, you still want those conveniences. And it feels good to not come home and stress out and and to uh, relax. And there's nothing relaxing, you know, about a woman taking care of a man. And in some circumstances, there's nothing relaxing about a man taking care of a woman. So it's, it depends on the situation. But the, in the general woman taking care of a man situation like that movie, Knocked Up, it's, it, it doesn't end that way. It's just so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I can't imagine you'd actually marry somebody like that. No. But I did. I married somebody like that. You know, when I was really young when I did, though, it was the party, you know, Vegas thing, and it was really just immature and impetuous. But it was uh, it was a party, really. That was it. It was in – I just recommend people do not get married until after they're 30, number one, if you're going to get married. And number two, you really need to take a long time to find out what this person's plans are because – the whole I know what I want to do get let's get let's get married uh, I'm gonna open a business you know we're gonna open a website where the you know we're gonna we're gonna advertise all the actresses n nude scenes that may sound really interesting when you're 22 and really um, bright and uh, insightful and cutting edge but it's really not <laughs> yeah. do your research <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for that Kimberly I appreciate the call it's 1-800-5800-TOM Cassie on the Tom like a show hello hi Tom hi Cassie um, I just uh, wanted to comment on the loser boyfriend topic. It's actually going to be ex-boyfriend now, or is ex-boyfriend now. I was with um, this person for five years, and I paid for everything. And I didn't mind it. I would have done it forever. I really would have. I mean, I even, I was leasing an apartment at the time. I got huge bonus checks. I set up his own bank account for him, put money in it. Um, over time, we did have uh, two children. We were never married. Um, 
And even then, I mean, I paid for everything. Uh, he was with for numerous, numerous, numerous jobs just over and over again. Um, and I didn't mind it. I mean, even nine months pregnant, I mean, towards the last two months of the pregnancy, I didn't really want to have sex. So, I mean, every day I would be like, hey, I know, you know, you got to get, you need to get something, you know. And I, I really thought I was giving my all, you know, but it just seems to not be enough because it's, and then all of a sudden, it just, you know, I think he got comfortable or he just, he just started lying and bringing in all kinds of drugs in the house. And I'm just like, you know, you had this made, you know, like I would have done it forever. And it just, it really just kind of baffles me. Like, why would you give that up? You know, like, which I'm, I, I'm loving it. I'm loving life right now. And even last night, I mean, I was, I've been living alone for like two months now. So, you know, and I, um. How do you I haven't like it? Up with anybody new yet, but I'm you know really getting anxious here, right? So, you know, I just I show up at his house, I buy some condoms, I don't know what he's been doing, and I get what I need, and I'm like, thanks, bye, you know. So I just, I mean, I just, you know, for anybody that's in a you know relationship that you know you just you're not getting anything once you know, and it's totally one sided. Um, get out while you can. You know, completely just get out. Even though I, I really feel that I, I would have continued to, you know, provide things. But it's just, you know, you hear someone keep saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. And it really just, after a while, you're like, I don't believe a dang word you say. Like, you know, even I'm going to the store. Yeah, sure you are, buddy, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just. And I, it baffles me for someone to give that up. I mean, I, the next time I even decide to even <laughs> remotely consider even being in a relationship again, I mean, there's uh, red flags go up everywhere, you know, completely. So I just wanted to comment on that, and I'm just happier than ever by myself right now. Maybe you just want to keep it that way. Oh, I, I'm just, I'm completely, I'm, it's my space. Don't get in my space. You know, I completely financially support myself and my children. I did have them at a young age. I am 24, which, you know, my life is where it is, but I completely support them. I even completely, it was like taking care of three children. And I just, I mean, I, do, you, do you know why there would be a reason why you'd want to get out of that situation? Maybe because he wasn't feeling like a man or... I mean, this, this this man had a piggy bank, you know? Like, I was, oh, here you go, hon, here. You know, and that was a sugar mom, and I didn't, you know... And maybe that was his primary concern. You know, maybe that was the problem. It's like, I guess I was being an enabler, you know, but, you know... And, and you thought you were going to fix him. You know, maybe, maybe you're right, you know? Actually, you know what, you're right. You know you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but, so... I, I guess, you know, you, you can only hear, you know, I'm going to do this so many times or, you know, before you just start seeing their eyeballs fill up with BS every time they open their mouths. and It's ridiculous. What do you look like, dear? What do I look like? Yeah. Um, I am 128 pounds. I'm 5'7". Um, I have blonde hair. I just got a haircut yesterday, actually. It's kind of a cute little new wavy bang cut. Um. I work out regularly. I think I have a pretty nice body. I'm definitely going to finance a breast lift with my next tax return, but uh, we'll take care of that real quick. So um, I, think, I think I'm pretty attractive. I mean, 24 with two kids, I know that it's not. Oh, you didn't mention the two kids. Yes, I did. I didn't hear that. I said it twice. Two kids. And, all right, so you had two kids. I did have two kids. I was That's two why kids. you had a loser boyfriend. So I was raising all three of them, pretty much. Yeah, well, you had a loser boyfriend because, let's face it, what successful man wants that baggage? Exactly. Now so, it no, all no, no, makes no, no. sense. I had the, no, 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 no. I didn't have two kids. Like, we had two children together. Um, you had two children with him? In, and I, you know, you know, I know how you feel about young relationships. I never had a boyfriend in high school or anything like that. I was always just... You know, really, like, I mean, I had a lot of guys hitting on me and everything. I just was always hanging out with them. And I always... So how did that work out for you, the uh, young relationship that had two kids with a guy you never married? Uh, how did it work out? How did that work out for you? Um, now I'm, I'm stuck in a complete financial situation where I'm supporting myself completely and... You know? <laughs> I hope the I hope the I, other I nineteen year olds. Person. I hope the other nineteen year olds. How old were you when you started popping out kids with this? Yeah, guy? I 
uh, was actually, I turned 21 when I was pregnant. So I had a big uh, sack glass of milk for my 21st birthday. Ladies, please. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what right now. But, I mean, you know, I mean, I do love my kids to death, of course. Um, but I, I, would, I would have done it differently. But I guess it's just how the cards had to play for me to learn my lesson. Unbelievable. An amazing story there. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800. Tom Talk radio is a pimple on America's ass. It has nothing to do with anything, okay? It is cheap entertainment for people stuck in their cars. It is not a political force of any kind at all. It's the Tom Likey Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likey Show. We're talking about successful women... Who'll get with loser guys. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's great. You know, sometimes you just want to have fun. But when men say they want to do that, oh, yeah, we're a bunch of misogynists. We're women haters. Oh, yeah. You just want to be with those bimbos. Yeah, right. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Maricela, you're on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Yes. Hi, I was calling about the topic. Uh, my name is Maricela, and I'm here at work. You know, it was funny because I was talking to one of the insureds that came. I just insured him, and he's like, have you ever um, heard of the Tom Likas show? And I was like, yeah, I'm, actually, my husband listens to that all the time, and I really don't like that guy. And I was talking about all these bad things. So he's like, you know what? You really need to listen to him. He has, he makes sense. So I'm like, you know what? Fine. I'm going to go on the website. I'm going to listen to that guy. So I'm listening into the um, the subject, and it makes sense. I mean, I agree with him. It makes no sense to be with somebody who's not going to be there for you. You know, for instance, I was in a relationship where I was the regional manager of four insurance offices. I was never at home. It would kill me to come home early to be with him. So with that said, he was just ended up cheating on me and doing all kind of bad things. So if you're in a relationship where the person is either doing too much for somebody else or for the company or for whatever it is, it's better to just get out of it because it's going to end up bad. You know? Well, I think you're right. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, again, in your own case, it's like a lot of other people listen to this show and they get all angry at me in the beginning. <laughs> I mean, I did. I was so upset. I said, you know what? One day I'm going to call that guy and I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. And my husband's like, don't do that. You know, he makes sense and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, you know what? Just be quiet. I don't want to talk to you right now. And then um, then I'm really listening to it. And, you know, you do make sense. And there is a lot of stuff that, you know, women out there should try to listen to instead of hating and be being so close-minded. Yeah. You know? And... Uh, as you know, the subject it's so it's so true, and we really shouldn't judge a person by the kind of person that they want to be with them. And I mean, if you allow men to do pretty much whatever they want, I mean, they should be able to um, go out with whoever they want to go out with and not be judged. You know, if a power woman goes out with a bimbo-looking guy or whatever, you know, she's fine, everything is dandy. But if a guy does it, you know, like you said, he's a womanizer or God knows what. Right. By the way, what's fair. wrong with being a womanizer? <laughs> what's wrong with being a womanizer? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, let's get off the subject before I give you a piece of my mind. Well, I mean, I'm not suggesting that married guys have affairs. I'm just saying if a guy is not married and he likes being with a lot of different women, what's the problem? What's the problem? There's a huge problem with that. What? There's a huge problem with that. I'd like to know what it is. Well, for once... Um, you see, I'm a married girl. I'm 22 years old. I just got married not too long ago. And I know my guy wouldn't go around with guys like that. That's why I married him and everything. As I'm not saying that, but as I just said to you. Everything, you don't know what you can catch with a guy that sleeps around and messes around with 100 women or whatever the hell he does. But you don't know what anybody does. I know what my husband is not doing. I know you that don't much. know what he was doing before you. <laughs> Maybe not, but I know what he's doing now. Well, but that's my point. I said to you, I'm not suggesting men should have affairs while they're in a marriage. In fact, I tell guys all the time, if you want to be going around having sex with everybody and, and her sister, you shouldn't oh, be no, married. No. But, but if a guy is not married, what's the problem with it? If he's not married, well, he should learn to respect himself just like a woman should. Well, right? uh, I mean, if I go around and sleep with your brother, what are you going to think of me? 
If you sleep with my brother? Yeah. Um. Or if, like, if a man sleeps with, you know, with his, uh, his girlfriend's sister or whatever it is, even if he's single, I mean, it still doesn't make it okay. Well, I, again, I'm not suggesting that people who are in committed relationships go out and have affairs, but I am saying if somebody is free to uh, uh, to do whatever they want, why shouldn't they be able to do whatever they want? They should, but if they're in a committed relationship... Or if but but uh, again, I've been saying this all through the conversation. I've been saying, I'm right. <laughs> when I say a womanizer, I'm not talking about somebody who is married and wants to have an affair, has a girlfriend and wants to have an affair. I'm talking about somebody who's not committed to anybody. Why should, why, what's the problem with them being womanizers? Who cares? That's how people get their heart broken. What do you mean because it's how people get their heart broken? A lot of people get their heart broken because that's why girls are the Because way they, they have unrealistic so expectations. So it's because they've got unrealistic expectations and they think they can change a man. Like they meet a man as a womanizer, they think they are going to be the one with that's the magic the vagina that's who's going to change it. that women shouldn't be like that. I actually disapprove of women who are like that, who try to keep down a man and try to change him because you're not going to. The way he is when you met him, that's the way he's going to be for the rest of the time you want to be That's with right. Him. And I'm number one witness of that. No matter how much you try, it's still going to be one. He's still going to be a jerk. He's still not going to remember your birthday. He's still not going to bring you flowers. And most definitely, he's still going to go around and screw whoever he wants. By the way, is there such a thing as a manizer? Yeah. There is? I've never heard that word. <laughs> there should be. I mean, there's women. But it's an example. Like, it's an example of the double right? standard I'm always talking who, about. You know, who pretty much does whatever she wants with guys. Yeah, well, but that's the thing. We don't even have a word to describe that. Yeah, but if you, in society's eyes, it's very bad for a, moment, a woman to go around and say and do stuff like that. So why don't we have a word for it? I have no idea. Hang on a second. Robert, what did you want to say to Maricela? Tom, this bitch is full of you know what. She is 22 years old. She's married. She doesn't know what her husband's doing. You know he's probably a player out there getting all kind of booty everywhere else. She's in dreamland. Oh, no. And are you married? Oh, hell no. That's the point. So you can stay by yourself. No, you, you know you're what? You're not going to find anybody yeah, with that kind of attitude. You can tell by the way you speak. You and don't know what the hell you're talking about. And just so you know, my husband is a about. responsible man. That's what 22 years old. And you don't you, know anything. Well, you shouldn't even think about getting married to at least 30. You. So how many guys have you been with? How many guys have you been with before you were married? Huh? How many guys did you sleep with? One. Oh, let's multiply that by about 200. By two hundred? Uh, oh no! Easy. I'm oh, sorry. No. Easy. You, you don't. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you're talking how I'm full of it, and I don't know. I'm like, you don't know me. So how about like, that? Oh, no, I could just. I you don't know, know anything you, about me. You, you, you know, you don't need. It, I mean, you don't I don't know. Need Myself to you, but let me just tell you this. I bet, for yeah, one, me, my husband me, is no, ten times no, more of a man than you will be. I am more it's of a woman cow. than you can ever, ever you begin to imagine. And not just that, but we live a beautiful life. Uh, Unlike you, you can stay pathetic. 22 years yourself. old. How old's your husband? I'm sorry, my husband is 26. Ah, and, and how long how long are we engaged? Hey, what, he knocked you up? How many kids do you have already? No, we don't have any kids. Ah, come on. I, I, we have no kids, and we've well, known you, each other for seven years. So so what? Uh, so that's the only guy you went with before you got married. So you're guy. You have no experience in life. No, don't you don't know what you're know talking he's about. A good man. Pardon me? I don't have to have experience and sleep around to know that he's a good man. Ah, get real. Do so I have to sleep around and know and try you, to find out what else is out there? Years, and know that he's a good he man to marry elsewhere. him? All right, Robert, I'm going to move on. I thank you for that. One more here. Uh, Justin, what did you want to say to Maricela? Tom? Yes. How you doing? Great. Long time listener, first time caller. Just got to tell this. This lady doesn't know what she's talking about. You, you, I, you know what? I think you, you think you know what your man does. And your man, to me, over here, sounds like he's a pussy. Because if you're on here talking about how he doesn't go around, he doesn't do these things, maybe he doesn't, but for sure he did when he was 21, when he was 18, when he was 19. I knew him at that age. You knew him at that age? So, you so I doubt it. For 15 years, that means this guy's a loser and hasn't been getting around at all. If he's 26 right now, or whatever he said he was, he's not getting around. He's not having Oh, man! The Tom Likas Show.